Don't eat my hat. Don't eat my hat. Thank you. No, no, don't eat the hat. State of the homestead. We're gonna do a check-in today, look at the different elements of the homestead, and see how everything's doing. Stop! First up are the sheep. As you can see, they're in a corral, a static corral, and they're getting hay fed. Hey, we've already been through this. No eating my hat. Oh boy. So you might be wondering, why in the world do I have them in a corral? They're not out on pasture, especially after building them a mobile corral to keep them on pasture and keep them moving in a rotational grazing program. Everything was fine when it was Lopsy and her Ram Lam here. But when we added this guy, things got a little rough in the mobile sheep pen. She didn't like having the other guy around. She started ramming him a lot. I took a lot of effort to secure the mobile sheep pen. There were a lot of little spots in it where the little lambs can escape. Like those little holes in the corners there. So I started putting up these panels to block the holes off, which worked really well until Mama Lopsy started ramming that lamb so hard she'd ram them right into these gates and it would knock them over and then the lambs would run out. Every time I noticed that the lambs were out free ranging, I would spend quite a bit of time getting them back into the corral, then resecuring the gates, only to have it happen hours later, over and over and over again over the course of a few days. After getting really tired of doing that, I gave up on the mobile pen. I moved the sheep to the static corral, just until Lopsy goes back to her home farm, and it's just the ram lambs. After I got the second ram lamb, I was only supposed to have Lopsy a couple more weeks. I figured it wouldn't be that long for them in there, but it's been about a month now and Lopsy's still here. So I need to work on getting her back to her farm. I need to contact Tess, her owner, to have her come pick Lopsy up, get her out of here so I can get the sheep back out on pasture grazing. But something really cool, it's kind of hard to see here on camera. It's not coming out that great. But in the wake of the mobile sheep corral is a green, a darker green grass that's regrowing. It's like lime green, dark green, back to lime green. And it goes that way all the way back to where they started. You might be able to tell from this view better. Here's one side of the trail, the path it went on. The middle. And the other side over there. The important thing is that I can see it. It's very obvious to me and it's an indicator of the amount of nitrogen these animals are putting into the ground for just being on a 12 by 12 patch of earth for less than 24 hours sometimes. And they can really, really green things up and increase the nutrient density of the soil that quickly. Things haven't worked out ideally with grazing the sheep so far this year. Ah. Not again. But things aren't bad. It could be a lot worse. Everyone's alive, everyone's healthy, and hopefully I'll get them back out of on pasture again real soon. The pigs have been an interesting experience so far this year. They're doing well. They're getting big, they're growing appropriately, and they're healthy. Overall, everything is going fine with them. I started grazing them way back there and moved them weekly 
all the way up to there. Originally, the plan was to have them make a U formation. They'd come back around this way and graze up this patch behind me, but it's not quite wide enough to accommodate the fencing. I miscalculated a little bit when I was planning this. So I decided to move them across the driveway over to this side right here. So they're gonna spend a little bit of time grazing over there and likely finish where the sheep are now. I'm gonna move them to that corral and finish them out there and that way they'll be in a pretty secure location for when it's time to harvest. When you go to harvest a pig or any animal for that matter, it's really best to have physical barrier fencing, like hard metal fencing to contain the animal rather than rely on electric fencing. If something goes wrong, this electric fencing is not gonna contain the animals. Uh, if they're frightened, if they're hurt in some way because something didn't go right. You definitely want to have the physical barrier fencing that the corral offers. The pigs are doing a lot more disturbance in each paddock. The craters are getting larger and larger as the pigs are getting larger. When I first started grazing the pigs and they were a lot smaller, their holes were a lot smaller so it was really easy to repair the paddocks with just a rake and then overseed. Now it's getting a lot more difficult with the craters being bigger and the amount of repair that needs to go into fixing back the paddock. I ran out of pasture mix seed a few weeks back so I haven't been overseeding as I should the last few weeks. I have since bought some so we're going to get some pasture seed down here really soon. But I'm going to show you now where I have done the overseeding so you can see what that looks like. This is it right here. This was the first paddock I had him in. This was completely turned up soil when they left here. There isn't all this green. There is knapweed growing back. This this green leafy thing right here is knapweed and there is some of that growing in there. But now there's all this clover in there, timothy, orchard grass. This spot right here where the regrowth is most prolific, it's a lot thicker and the grass looks more lush. That was their toilet area. That's where the pigs always choose to defecate in the same spot in the paddock. So that was where a lot of nutrient was deposited, of course, results in grass regrowth like that. This is the next paddock up. The recovery isn't as nice through there. And as you can see, as we move forward there, it just hasn't regrown quite as well as that first paddock. Of course, that has a lot to do with the rain. We're getting almost no rain now, and it's been hotter, drier, all kinds of variables like that that could impact the regrowth in a particular area. Using the seed spreader in here is not so easy with all these undulations. It does not push easily through here. I'm gonna go back to spreading by hand. The barred rock chickens, they are doing great. They're not laying eggs yet, but they're getting super close. When I got them, they were about nine weeks old. That was back in May, I think. We're in late July now, very soon. I'm gonna be getting some eggs going from these ladies. That chicken tractor's working out okay still. I've been moving them. I'm not doing the instant chicken garden where I'm leaving them on the same spot for two weeks anymore like I initially was. They're moving in about once a week or less now. This is where they originally were for the two weeks and then we made the instant chicken garden here. But then summer happened and I never planted it. I was really excited to see this thing work but uh, now we're in the heat of the summer and it's a little late planting some things. Maybe there's a chance of doing some fall gardening, who knows. And speaking of gardening, we have the garden. If you saw one of my recent videos about the pig escape, then you know the pig pretty much destroyed my garden. But my kale, for the most part, was left intact. I did have one kale casualty, but the rest of these guys held on here. With as hot as it is now, being full on summer here, finally, 
it is definitely time to harvest this kale before these guys start fading out for the season. So we're gonna get these harvested. The real miracle story here is what else has survived that I didn't think would. This tomato plant looked absolutely wrecked, like it had been chewed up. The It just did not look like it was gonna make it. But look, fruit. And it's still blossoming here. Other than the kale, this is the only other survivor I knew about was my zucchini plant. And this one got away from me here. I have a huge zucchini here, which as you know are pretty flavorless when they get this big. So we'll see if the pigs would like that. But down here, I have some really nice zucchini that I'm gonna harvest. We have another tomato survivor over here. This is a real big surprise. I think this might be aroma. Oops, didn't mean to pick that, sorry. This one was all collapsed over and I thought a goner, but here it is, still fighting. Everything else in here looked to be a casualty. I don't think there are any other special survivors here, but I'm really happy to be getting something out of the garden this year after what happened. Piggy piggies, I have a snack for you. Come on, piggy piggy, let's go. They're taking their afternoon nap, so they'll get to that later, I hope. Blue, my male Akbash livestock guardian dog, is doing fine. He's old, of course, so he's just taking it easy right now. But overall, he's doing fine. It's his female counterpart, Willow, that has had some issues lately. She's on sabbatical, healing up quite nicely off-site right now. I just posted a video update on her getting a bath. Overall, she's doing much better. She's in much better spirits. She's having a lot of fun playing with her buddy, Poe. I'm not sure when she'll be returning to the homestead, but she won't be returning to duty for a long time because we have to let her coat grow back in, her undercoat, which may not be back in time for winter. So she may be off all the way through next spring. We'll just have to see how it goes. In conclusion, I'm happy to report the state of the homestead is good. All is well, with the exception of the garden casualties and the grazing program for the sheep being a little bit different than I had planned. Everything's going fine, everything's good. I think we're right on target for having a really good fall harvest this year.